Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Mmm. Oh, what's that in a good stretch? Especially when it's a home stretch. <laughs> <laughs> Just I was going to say, fall is going to be beautiful here on the farm, darling. Mm-hmm. It smells like fall tonight, doesn't it? Mm, it's a wonderful smell. There ought to be a perfume called burning leaves. Burning leaves. Mm. Hey, Imagine David. That behind your ear. Hmm? Don't settle down. I am settled down for a nice long evening by the fire, without a fire. The evening would be nicer if it were shorter. It's only nine o'clock. Well, Mama's gone to bed. If it's good enough for her, well, it's Mama good enough. Mama had a headache. I could work one up if I tried. Well, save your strength. Mm. What are you going to do? Well, I might do a little work on the new red schoolhouse. Work? Mm-hmm. Must you? You want to uh, be kept in mink, don't oh, you? Oh, well, I prefer muskrat. Well, even for muskrat, I have to do some homework. Then skip the muskrat. I'll wear sable. Young woman, if you're trying to wheedle me into spending an evening of idle chatter... I'm not interested in idle chatter either. Skadoodle, I'm busy. Oh, gosh. You don't want to talk at all? No. You really don't want to talk? Guess you don't. I can take a hint. Then take it. All right, all right, all right. Oh, Mr. Norton. Oh, Fritz, just a man I wanted to talk to. Fritz, what is it you have that I haven't? Uh, what is it, Mrs. Norton? That's what I wanted to know. Pay no attention to her, Fritz. I was just thinking of coming out to the kitchen. There's something I want to talk to you about. Yes. Oh, first try some of this new tobacco. See if you like it. Yeah. Well, I... I... Go well, ahead. David has cans and cans of it. A rich client. I smoke it later. Now, no need to be so formal with me, Fritz. Smoke it now. Well, yes. Danke, sir. Mm, smell that. How are you coming on the place? You still up to your ears and work? Oh, no. Besides working on this land, it's not work. It's a pleasure. Eats to his own taste, as the woman said when she kissed a cow. Oh, go kiss a cow. Don't you think we ought to hire some day labor on the place? But what for? Well, I was thinking of clearing out that underbrush behind the pasture. Ah, why spend money for lazy loafers? I soon get plenty of time. I do it myself quicker and better. No, I dare say you would. You mustn't but I don't... kill yourself working. Well, don't, don't worry. I am the first to say when it is too much work. Mm, I'll bet. Hand me those matches. Huh? Uh, we yeah. have still no animals on the farm, so I am practically with nothing to do. Someday I hope you... Yeah. Well, don't count your chickens before they hatch. It's not chickens. I count but cows and pigs and... Well, we have to take uh, that work seriously. Well, the farm is not a farm without animals, and I promise you would not need any more help. I am a very good hand with animals. You don't have to tell me. Hmm. It's a fine tobacco, Mr. Norton. Sounds fine. Very fine. Mm. Here, I have an extra can. Well, I, I did not no, mean... of course it. you did, of course. Uh, well, I'll clear up the underbrush at the end of the week. Well, good night. Good night. Say good night to Bertha for us. Yes, I will tell her. David, hmm? why should we be so blessed? But we are. Have a chocolate? I'm smoking my my, my pipe, Claudia. Mm, Don't squeeze the chocolates like that. I'm looking for one that's not figs or coffee. Well, take pot luck. It's rude to poke. Ooh, I got a green one, Ugh. Here, I'll take it. Thought you were smoking your pipe. Mm, green one is marzipan, Simpleton. What? Marzipan, I mean. Oh, I always wondered how you pronounced it. Mm -hmm. I detest marzipan. Mm, well, don't take my word for it. I think I'll comb out Shakespeare's hairballs. Now, that's one of your better ones. Better ones what? Non-sequiturs. Oh, them. While you comb out Shakespeare's hairballs, maybe I'll get some peace and quiet. I'll tell Shakespeare you're working. Kitty, 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 kitty. Can't you call him pussy quietly? Cat, pussy cat. How would he hear? Cats have a sixth sense. But I haven't. You haven't got one. Oh, you're so sweet to me, darling. Here, kitty, 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 pussy cat. Shakespeare. Maybe he's gone upstairs. Shakespeare. Now, what would he do that for? I don't know. Maybe he likes it Yes, I better look. Here's 
Peace and quiet. I hope that cat's hiding in the attic. Now. Hmm. Bob's dim in this line. Oh, well. Way down yonder in the yank tank, my fountain pen. Where is that blasted pen? Claudia! Claudia! Hey, Claudia! Maybe Shakespeare was in the attic. Claudia! Where are you? Hey! I'm in the nursery, David. Well, don't tell me Shakespeare's keeping watch over Bobby. Come on in. I want my fountain pen. It's in the pantry. Come on in. What's it doing in the pantry? I needed it. Look, David. At what? Bobby. Look, he has his mouth open. <laughs> Looks as if he were smiling. <laughs> but it's gas. He smells so damp and sweet. Baby smell. If I were to walk blindfolded through an immense corridor of babies, I'd know which one was Bobby. You would, too. He looks like every other baby, and he smells like every other baby. Oh, that's what you think. Except I don't think you do either. Oh, David, he's ours. Hey, you're only supposed to kiss babies on the cheek. Shh, don't tell anybody on me. But it's, uh, it's different with wives. So come here. I'm glad I'm not a baby. Let's go down for Claudia, Hmm? what about his belly? What about it? He has one. He's supposed to. Will he outgrow it? Of course he'll outgrow it. I hope not too soon, though. I love it. Well, don't make a sissy out of it. Well, he's only two and a half months. A little while longer won't hurt him. You don't think it's um, sort of silly to go downstairs again? When our bedroom is right here down the hall. Did you say my fountain pen was in the pantry? All right, I'll bring it to you. Oh, what a bore. Well, don't loiter. Mm, I never loiter. Shakespeare, here you are. Now, come on, Shakespeare, you just sit on my lap. Be still or I'll wring your neck. I'm not hurting you, you dope. I haven't even touched you. So you don't have to cry in case. Now, be quiet. Hey, darling, did you receive a notice of a life insurance premium? No. If anybody had sent a check, I'd remember. This isn't a check, it's a bill. You said it was a premium. Well, a premium is a bill for an insurance premium. You're getting repetitions. Now, all I want to know is, did you receive it? If it's a bill, it's in the top drawer. If it's a premium, I don't know where I put it. Maybe I filed it under P. P? Only I haven't got a file. What do you want with it, anyway? I want to pay it. I thought life insurance was money you received, not gave out. Oh, heaven grant me patience. I thought it was all velvet. You know better than that. Now stop trying to act dumb. All right, if you won't tell me. David, the moon. Never mind the moon. But you've got to look. Look right through, right, right, right there through the window. Quick, put out the light. I will not put out the light. It's a harvest moon. Great, big, orange, and round. Make a wish. You only make wishes on new moons. I make wishes on harvest moons, too. I wish you weren't so dumb. And I wish life would never be any less wonderful than it is right now. You happy? Terribly. light out, the moon's twice as bright. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. The apple tree will be fall soon. In winter. David, don't work on the schoolhouse plans tonight. Don't do that life insurance thing either, please. Oh, I get pushed around. Don't do this, don't do that. Oh, the world is so full of a number of things. The world is full of two kinds of people. Those who quote Alice in Wonderland and those who don't. It isn't Alice in Wonderland, it's Tennyson. Anyway, we should be. What? Happy as kings. I'm as happy as kings. Are you? Oh, well, I'm happy. Really, David? Mm-hmm. 
But before we go up to bed, I'm going to fill out this insurance premium thing. Where, where's the checkbook? Right there in the second drawer. Why do you always have to do something first before you do something else? Because that is life. Mm. Besides, you wouldn't want me to let my insurance lapse. Why not? Because then if I die, it wouldn't be worth anything to you. David, stop it. And I'm going to have to call all my insurance. I'm going to call them up and have it all arranged so it's paid to you in a small amount regularly rather than in a lump sum. David, don't talk like that. Then I know you won't go out and lose it all at once. Then I won't have to worry. You wouldn't have to worry if you were dead. Well, David, I hate talking about insurance and wills. And... Silly. How can you be so silly? I'm not silly. You don't understand. I couldn't live if anything ever happened to you. You'd live. You darn well would have to live. I wouldn't. I'd kill myself. What about Bobby? Bobby wouldn't matter. Oh, yes, he would. He'd matter more than anything else. David, please. Claudia, you're crying. Darling, hold me tight. You little fool. You little fool. Darling, what's the matter? I don't know. It's just... Talking all that silly nonsense. Well, you're trembling. The spirit must have just walked over my grave. A minute ago, <laughs> you were so happy as king. I still am, I uh, guess. What's the matter now? Come on, tell me. I, I don't know. I just can't explain. Maybe everything's too perfect, as if it just couldn't keep on that way. Oh, nonsense. Fritz and the farm and Bobby. Now, nothing's going to change. A harvest moon. Everything's so quiet. David, let's go up. I should have known I wouldn't get any work done. Don't joke. Darling, can't you tell me? It's just as if I'd said goodbye. To what? To who? I don't know. To this whole evening that was mine and yours. Now it's gone by. There. There will be others. Of course there will, if you say so. Tomorrow night, the moon won't be so full, and tomorrow is never the same. Tomorrow might be better. Come on. Let's go up. Remember the old Cracker Barrel around which folks used to cluster in general stores? Sometimes nowadays it seems the Coke cooler has taken its place. You'll find a Coca-Cola cooler in shops and stores of all kinds today. But it serves as more than a pleasant meeting place. It also helps you shop refreshed. Oh, Mr. King. Yes, Fritz. You smoke a pipe? Yes, occasionally. Would you care to taste some of this excellent tobacco Mr. Norton gave me? Well, I wouldn't mind if I did. Good, I bring you some. Ah, I smell rain for tomorrow. Oh, no, the moon's out. After the moonshine, rain. After the light, dark. After the pleasure, sadness. Ah, uh, just a saying, Fritz. I wonder. But, anyway, tomorrow it rains, and that is all, I hope. Now, you speak as if something terrible were about to... Look, I'm not superstitious, and I refuse to be upset by a few clichés, Fritz. Yes, we wait for time. I bring you the tobacco. Do that, and thank you. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are... Whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya Starr, and the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs> 